Brother. Brother. 50. Episode 50. Episode 50. Oh my God. Five, I can't hold, believe it. Hold up to zero. You got it. <laughs> oh Cora. my God. Five, zero, I don't 50, believe baby. it, man. Welcome to the Sports You Show, Sports You Podcast here with episode number 50. Gifting with the Y right here, big, yes, sir. big grift. Big grip, big Loves gift. gritty players. Gritty players. All loaded. We got our sporties right here. Sporties, shout out to my guy Rob. You got him, we got, we got to make him. And then you have also Rob on the mic, your host for the Sports You Podcast. We also have, again, co-host here, Git, Big Grift with the Y. Yes, sir. But let's go ahead and just kind of recap from what was happening in the last time. We actually ran a live episode. Uh, didn't really notify anybody about it. Just kind of uh, suck it out there, see who was going to join this and that. And uh, it turned out well, right, Gifton? How'd you feel about it? Oh, yeah, definitely. It was, uh, turned out pretty good. I uh, didn't really get like a lot of views that uh, I really wanted to. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, uh, it's good. Good learning experience, good trial and, and that, error as I always. Mean, that's our fault. That's our fault because when we were doing it, I, like it was just a spur of the moment type thing, and I didn't let any of our fans know. And I didn't. The thing is, I didn't want to put out a, a bad product. So we already got the first one out, got our butterflies out, did the first one. It actually came out pretty well. I felt good about it the same way he did. But uh, yeah, while we did it, discuss the post games, the post games of those uh, games there. Check it out for that day. But yesterday we and today we had a couple more games here. Get in. The first one yesterday that we're going to discuss is the Spurs and the Grizzlies and how they went at it. What was your takeaway from that game? I told you. I told you. I I, I I told you. I thought DeMar was going to do it. Told you. He wasn't doing it uh, with offensive-wise. He had a lot of shots. Remember, you were discussing a little bit about it, but uh, he didn't really take on the passing role that I I was thinking I told you, bro, them gritty Grizzlies is coming for the eighth seed. Told you. So you got them over the Warriors. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and rock with Memphis all the way now. All right, so to to discuss the next one, because we just want to go by these really quick, I do right. want to do a shout-out to Dylan Brooks. Oh, shout-out Dylan great, Brooks, man. Great game. He had a great game. Him and Jonas Valanciunas were like another 2020 double-double. Oh, dude, you were just speaking about Jonas Valanciunas, so shout-out to him. Great game, and let's see what happens tomorrow. It's going to be another gritty game. We are also uh, speaking of the Warriors, who have to now play the Grizzlies since they lost against the Lakers there. Right. Uh, the Lakers won. They beat the Warriors. Get them. What was your first takeaway from that game? I was right again. You're right again. Oh, oh damn. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, man, it was just, uh, just you know, pretty good to see. Definitely good to see LeBron come back because uh, I know he's always said he was feeling like a little sluggish. Mm. He didn't really feel 100%. But it was good to see him still go out there and get, like, what, 22, 11, and, like, 14? Yeah, he had, like he had that. a triple double. I think it was, like, yeah. 20. I think he got the first two right, and then it was 11 again. Right. And and the thing is, is that, like, he was just downplaying it, giving all these excuses. He get hits in the eye. He's again. always downplaying Man, shit, I just, bro. Yeah, he just always wants to create a narrative that can give him an excuse, it feels like. And it's just like, bro, just, just play the game and – it will speak for you, and exactly. I guess like you're overcoming all of these things. But we 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 already seeing it that type of stuff. So don't you don't have to necessarily milk it. Right. But that game right there, it showed how crazy Steph can be even more, just solidifying everything. But in this next game, if he loses to the Grizzlies, like you predict, how do you see Steph and Curry? Do you still see him as the same type of player? Uh, people put him at the all time greats type question. of level. Uh, him not having a uh, Finals MVP as well. Where are you going from on that? Do you still think he's an all time great? Does this like let's say let's say he does lose tomorrow, like okay. you're predicting, that's what you're expecting. So do you already see him as not necessarily an all time great when it comes no, down no, to No, 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 no. I I definitely can't I can't do that to Steph, bro. Because Steph was such a transcending player. Yeah. Like, he literally changed the game of basketball. Try to trap you with the hot with the hot take, but uh he didn't fall for it. This guy's amazing. He's he's going crazy. All right, but let's actually get into the first headline of today. We spoke about just a little bit of what's happened. Now we got the Grizzlies and the Warriors. He's picked the uh Grizzlies. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Warriors. I expect greatness coming out. I think it's gonna actually happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, that's why he's an all-time great because he'll lead him past the Grizzlies. Hopefully, yes, sir. But I guess I was wrong on the last two games here too, and that wasn't even on purpose so that we could beat against each other. That was because I actually fucking picked them. But yeah, I was dead ass on my picks. Ah, you live, you live to uh, predict another terrible prediction another day. <laughs> so here we go with the first one. The headline: With the Lakers defeating the Warriors today or yesterday, LeBron will play Chris Paul for the very first time in the playoffs. Let me just speak on this one first. Please do. I think these both of these guys like have the same type of mentality, same type of IQ when it comes to basketball. Yes. And it's just so awesome to see how if we had a mini version of LeBron James, like that would be like Chris Paul. You know what I mean? Like doesn't mm-hmm. have the athleticism, just that small grindy guy. And like 
he he uh he's always had a shot don't get me wrong but i feel like he got way more efficient in the later parts of his career with the three-point shot of course um he he's a timely scorer with everything in mind and the same thing with lebron you know he's always kind of like a bent of pass first guy but he's so dominant and he's so big like it's so easy as as a freight train to get into the paint and stuff right so it's just really cool to see when you have two minds like this of basketball go at one another. So right. I'm very, very, very excited, and I hope that this actually goes to a seven series. I mean, a seven game series because those are just a lot of quality games right there. That's that's just amazing basketball just to watch all that. And then you get to see Devin Booker on the stage where a Lakers uh, game is being played. You know, he's gonna get a shit ton of fucking like exposure on that. Yeah, you re- you ready for this? What's up? You ready for this? Oh, you, what are you gonna say? Who you got? Phoenix and five. Five. Phoenix and five. They, they, what, didn't, they didn't get Chris Paul for no reason, bro. What's your what's your main reason as to why it's five? Like like what what is the main part? You just say Chris Paul, right? And we don't we don't no, understand I, why I, Chris I, Paul. Yeah. But is there a mismatch that you see, or is it just th- their team is just better? Uh well, I think the 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 biggest thing is, have you noticed the Lakers can't really play Montrez Harrell and Andre Drummond, Kyle Kuzma towards like the last like four or five six seven minutes of the game? Okay, first of all, they had they had. Kyle Kuzma in there. Uh, yeah, but not the towards the end stretch. of the game. Not at the the debt like the minutes minutes the, the right. main minutes at the end. Okay. But the thing is, is that who's Kyle Kuzma gonna guard? That's or or be in there for? That's like gonna be beneficial to them against the Warriors. So the best part that that the Lakers needed was defense. Ooh, excuse me, defense ooh. on the guard side. Yeah, I know that was weird. <laughs> uh, defensive on the guard side. So right. that's the thing with Frank Vogel. And we we're going to speak on that a little bit later on uh-huh. how he's playing and actually using, utilizing like matchups, right. uh, mismatches, things that like of that nature. Right. But the nature. thing is, is that nature, <laughs> I'm really upset with Andre Drummond. A lot of Lakers fans are oh, upset. Oh, hella. And I was expecting hella. him to be like a Roy Hibbert type, type role. Like what Frank, Ro- oh, what Frank Vogel no, no, had. No, 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 no. no, no I, I no, need, no, no, I need to take that title no, away. No, no, not the right Take it away. That's terrible. But I think the main thing that I wanted to say was I just feel like Chris Paul is going to set up like Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton so much that they're just going to be like OP kind of. Because this that's night. what that's what that's what Devin Booker's always needed since he's been in Phoenix, like somebody to like set him up. <clears throat> this whole season has been evidence as to, yes, that's exactly what he needed. Right. And you're exactly right. And my my thing is, is that I, I really want to bring up Cameron Payne. Uh yeah, because he's playing like he's playing Whoa. his ass off. He's playing uh, his ass off. I think he had like an injury uh, just like recently, but um, it, he's, he's gonna back. be a big. Yeah, I think so too. But I'm saying like he had it recently. Oh, okay. Uh, if he can be the same type of production as he's been for them the whole entire season, right? Basically, a three and D type of dude, but more uh, circumstantial as to like he he plays the same type of way the whole time, but he makes really big plays and right. he'll hit that that three if he's right open and stuff. So. Uh, it's really important when in the playoffs you can knock down threes, and the only thing is, is that he's young, and sometimes that plays a role positively or negatively. But uh, that's the first headline here. Let's get into. We talked about like all the concur- uh, current events that are happening with the NBA. Um, with with that series, I'll go ahead and pick there. I hope it goes seven. I'll, I'll stick to that. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Lakers. I just think that overall, uh, the other two are just gonna be too much for them. Uh, I don't expect that Anthony Davis and LeBron James lose in the first round. Like that, no. But Anthony much, right? Davis scares me sometimes. Because you already see, is it is it overhyping? And everybody's already picking the Lakers as the favorites, right? I, to I, some degree, yes. So it's not necessarily a hot take to say that, like you know, Lakers are going to take it. My thing is, is that is it, it? It I think it's too much to be like, you know, what these Suns now they're just going to beat this already championship, really well oiled, like really well gelled machine in the Lakers. And Frank Vogel is really good at putting the defensive matchups in, right. like we said. So we'll speak about that again a little bit later here. But let's bring it a little bit early here to the NFL. Mike Evans, Gifton. We talked about him. You watched a lot of him. Playing with the GOAT! Tom, the GOAT! Tom Brady. He's playing with them. And he actually put up another 1,000-yard season. You know what that means, right, Gifton? Are you not entertained? Are I, you not entertained? I, I'm. T- Look what I happens love... when you play with Tom Brady, okay, man. Oh, wait, chill, chill. He's played with shit and still put up the same numbers. Greatness. This is not. This is not about Tom Brady. This is about Mike Evans. Now, Mike Evans has put up seven straight years of having of having thousand yard 
plus season. Yeah, that actually kind of blew my mind when I was looking at the script earlier. I didn't know it was seven seven straight. Years? If you get one, you're considered elite in the and it, almost though like, back in the olden days of the back NFL. In the, back these, in like the eighties, recent yeah. like recent like no, not eighties, but even like five years ago before that. If really? you go, yeah, like if you had a thousand receiving yards, you're considered elite in this league. Nowadays, it's like everybody's getting a thousand yards because that's just the way the league goes. But so it's not like crazy, crazy like impressive in the later years but in the first years when he's really developed and with the terrible quarterbacks as we just mentioned Mm. he's still able to produce for this team now let's speak about it just a little bit here uh let's let's kind of just put it up uh 2014 1051 2015 1200 so on and so forth i don't think it's hard to get into specifics with that and then uh 2020 he just barely got it with a thousand and six right right even with all the weapons he was still able to you know, find his way through and still be able to put up those types of numbers. That's that crazy. And so, he's only 27. Yeah, exactly. And he's exactly. only 27. So, get them, I actually Wild. put down a couple of per, uh, a couple of comparisons to other elite receivers. You want to name a, out a couple of those? You can Ooh. name the first one here. So, we got Antonio Brown with 7,093 yards with 38 touchdowns and Devontae Adams with 5,194 yards and 44 touchdowns. All right, let's, let's stop right there. Wow. Let's stop right there. So... We have one guy, basically both of these guys are over 5,000 yards yep. with, let's just say, 44 touchdowns, right? Yep. This man, Mike He's Evans, 8,266 yards and 61 touchdowns. So oh. still 1,000 yards over anybody else's type of yards At when it comes 27. to those two. 27. 27. Like, so, bro, he still has like a good four years to go, maybe. With worse players around him in the Buccaneers. Maybe a little bit better when it comes to the line and everything. That's crazy. But. With worst players around him, he has better numbers than Antonio Brown, Devontae Adams, like we just mentioned, Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, damn, he beat Julio? And and, and that's just crazy. Well, Julio has always been, like, getting lost every every once in a while, but he's just a really nice name. Like, he has a crazy talent, and he just right. gets double teamed every, every single time. But anyway, so Mike Evans, man, I just want to really, ex- like, not necessarily expose him, but... Put him on a little bit more of a higher type of uh, uh, a totem pole. You know what I mean? Because he's never really been a really appreciated type of wide receiver. And no. now that he's on a winning team, right. one that's having finally some primetime games, one that's with Tom Brady and everything, like giving them more exposure. Brady. This guy literally just became a Hall of Famer. There's been people that put in all these types of numbers, right? Mm-hmm. And not not these specifically because this is the first player to ever do it. But I'm saying like where they have thousand yard seasons, just really nice seasons, really nice productive seasons, and they don't make it into the Hall of Fame, such as like a Sterling Sharp, and and they don't make it to the Hall of Fame because they don't like uh, it doesn't go into winning. But now this guy won a championship because of Tom Brady, like so many other fucking players who uh, got a ring because of Tom Brady, right. and he just got put into the Hall of Fame just like that. So it's just it just sucks that like. Somebody could be putting up the numbers and have that production and just still be so underrated. Uh, just nobody's really talking like that. Even in the NFL, like top 100 players, like he never gets like over 30, I feel like. So mm. this one right here is just th- th- this guy needs to be like, like, I feel like everybody knows Odell Beckham. Nobody re- would have really known about Mike Evans before that last NFL season. That's a great point because I feel like in today's world, we just pay attention to looks more instead of numbers. That's why everybody knows Odell and his, his hairstyle. He's not his bad looking. And, he's not bad looking. Pause. But I'm just saying like. Oh, the, I, like I got like, confidence in myself. I can tell another man he's good looking. He's a good looking man. Look at, but, look at all. I like men with beards, right, Gifton? Oh, oh, all right. We made it a little hey, weird. Hey, hey. But go ahead. Um. Yeah. Definitely, uh, shout out Mike Evans. Like, just want to give some flowers to you. Appreciate it, uh, Tom. Thank you for you know being a great. G- giving goat. him his ring. Giving give him his ring. Giving another lead. Giving a leader. Honestly, he, thank you for Tom for putting a leader a leader in that fucking like locker room so yes. that they can go ahead and win a championship because they had all the talent there. They just they needed a leader. And Mike Evans being your right hand man, just one guy to go up and get it. I think about it in penalty yards. He has so many times where he gets like pass interference, and he gets so much penalty yards based off of those alone. So if you add those in on these extra uh, receiving yards, I'm sure. Fuck! Oh my goodness. I, and, and there's like been speculation about changing that rule. Like if you get a 
pass interference and like you could actually get the penalty yards because you're the one who caused it. But Ooh. I don't really believe in that. We'll see what happens going forward. But to the next one, get the, I want you to introduce this one, sir. Oh, man. So recently at the staple, actually yesterday, so Draymond Green was warming up and a fan screamed at him. At the Staples Center. At the Staples so Center. So we were in L.A. So he was in L.A. He said, fuck you, That's Draymond. Oh, what did he say? He said, fuck you. Not angry this time, right? Get the, nah. This is somebody hey, else saying. Hey, it's not me, baby. I've changed my ways. And then Draymond responds to him saying, you sitting with your son? Why you teach him that? Why would you do that? And I just want to ask you, Gifton, you see that, you 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 hear that confrontation between him and a player, I mean, uh, the, a him fan. and a fan. Where do you, where, what, what's your stance on this? Do you think the fan's in the wrong do you think that Draymond is just there's, being a little sensitive no, based off his mouth? There's no way I'm going to sit that close to Draymond Green and scream, fuck you. <laughs> no way. <laughs> there's no, there is Draymond no Green. fucking way I'm going to be that That's close crazy. to Draymond and say, fuck you. I know I say fuck a lot of people on this show. I'll yeah. be kidding, but ain't no way. I was going to say fuck you to Draymond Green. So we're at... Because I have too much respect for Draymond. Yeah. I, I like Draymond as a human and as a player. Okay. But it's just... that That's pathetic on the fans then. Like, bro, you're you you, you you're spending your hard-earned money just to get that close to say fuck you. So, that's so, just pathetic. So you don't like it? No, nah, I don't you know, like that. The way that they shaped the story, nah. you don't like the way that it went. No, definitely just playing not. off looking No, at because it. it's like, bro, what, what, did, what did you win from that? All right, all right. So we went to the Angels game the other day. And we were... <laughs> and, and you were heckling people... I was heckling people in the stands. Bro, I wasn't we, heckling. We were, I was we heckling in people in the stands. Yeah, we, were, we were in the nosebleeds, definitely. And it was the guy who was like, remember we was reciting, who was we was reciting South Park lines, like fuck yeah, you. He yeah. was like fuck you. Yeah, okay, but well, well, we were still heckling. And so when I read it, I felt the same way you did. I was right. like, I was like, oh man, like that guy's a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what a prick. Who fucking does that? Who said? Who goes up to an athlete that you admire? Like, he paid your hard earned money for, right. it, and you're like. Hey, Draymond Green, like, I like you can't say like, I love you, like, like you look like something or whatever. You said, oh fuck you, like, yeah, that's... and it's like I was like, hey, like that's fucked up, bro. Like, don't be doing that. And I did the same thing when we were at uh, the ballpark with you. I was like, hey, like, don't don't do that, bro. Like, like don't please don't do that. Like, what? Because I was be... saying Florida boy. No, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't even Florida that. Boys! It was just that like we were being loud in an Angel Stadium, and it was already like COVID restrictions, so there's not a lot of people there. And so Angel Stadium is totally different from Dodger Stadium and, like, the um, the culture of it, all that shit, the vibe. And so, like, we have all these people around us that, like, it's like they don't approve necessarily. And then you just have, like, everybody's being loud and, and like, raunchy and stuff. And I was just like, hey, like, chill, chill, chill. So, uh, you know, I can see both ends here. Like, like, dude, like, I, I actually was reading, like, some comments about this topic and somebody was like, like, I'm a Philly fan. And if I seen that happen, like, and Draymond Green said, oh, like, you're going to teach your son that, all this, all that. And I'm a Philly fan. And, like, my son would, probably would have, like, flipped him back off, right back off after I told him, like, fuck you. So that's, like, Philly, right? And yeah. then he had Dodger Stadium, right? Mm -hmm. the, the way that we handle ourselves there, right. which you could be as blasphemous as you want. Like, Pretty much. <laughs> fuck him. Fuck him. And then I, in Angel Stadium, I didn't feel right. Maybe I wasn't at home. Maybe, like, I've never been there before. Like, I, I don't know what it, what it was. But ultimately, I was just like, hey, like, Take it easy, man. Like that—that's what these ones were. Like I felt like that when you guys were like yelling at that stuff. Nah, you know yeah. I mean? But like I, I'm all about cheering. Don't get me wrong. I'm don't a pro me, player. Don't get me wrong though. I, I was I not saying some funny shit heckling everybody? Yeah, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> but like the thing is that like I just I don't know. Like I get it. Like I I'm the one that's had to do that too. Like and if all the crowd is saying like. Fuck you, certain player, blah, 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 blah. Fuck you, certain player. Like, I'll join in because, every, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm part of you the guys. moment. You, wanna, you know what I'm age. saying? You came to Angel Stadium for, but, for that experience. Yeah, but, but I, I didn't. Mean, you don't just fucking pay $1,200 for <laughs> however much however much the fucking tickets were just to get that low to be like, hey, yo, Dre, <laughs> fuck you. No, bro. Dre, like, Dre I'm fuck that, you. That's, that's, uh, that's so pathetic hey, and just classless Let in me my tell you eyes, something. Bro. If I'm, I'm with my homies, too, like if I'm with my family, if I'm with my grandpa, maybe if I'm with my kid, too, I ain't saying like, hey, fuck you, Dre, all this, all that. Like, come on, bro. Like, that's, that's messed up. Nah, uh, <laughs> hey, but you're also right, too. Like, in the first place, if I'm that close to Draymond, I'm not saying fuck you, Draymond. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. no. But enough talking about that stuff. It's really funny. It was a great talk, great uh, talk right there. Definitely. But I do want to get into something a little bit more serious here. We've been talking about Dame and his off uh, 
off like not not necessarily off the court there you go off the court like not necessarily issues but what he's in had to endure during the season right uh, a lot of downfalls uh not necessarily downfalls just traumatizing things have been that's what i was gonna say can we call it like off the court trauma yeah there we go because i don't there's on court trauma and off the court trauma, and i don't want to even put it like lightly either the things that he has to endure like he has to you know hold that for the rest of his life yep uh so you can go to past podcasts to hear what we had to say about that uh but caleb caleb swinnigan just recently uh has been posted being a little bit more overweight this is just years uh i think a year and a half from uh, when he just started playing, or when he was last playing in the NBA. Yeah, bro, he's put on 300 pounds in a year. 300 pounds in a year. Uh, so so Dame was speaking out about it, uh, being the person that he's been standing, like, I don't know, I just love what this guy represents, and he just continues to uh, fulfill, like, his representation. Like, his he has a brand, right? Yeah. And he backs it up every single time. Yep. And and he's just no nonsense, very Game straightforward. Dollar. And he got your back every single time. It just feels like that's that's the vibes I get. And he always backs like my uh you know, my assumptions up. You feel me? Right. All right, so let's say here. See, so he says, if you gonna post uh this shit with real concern, that's cool, but don't ask how does one go from this to that and you don't know what is going through uh to cause a drastic change. So I just wanted to bring up a couple of different other things on how like other uh, athletes are responding to like mental health, uh, just being healthy overall, taking care of yourself as a person. You know, Kyrie's been taking uh, some like expenditures, taking for granted, taking for granted as well. Definitely we just talking about how his efficiency is or with the 50, 40, 90 season as well. Uh, you also talk about DeMar DeRozan, how we're talking about he's adding another tool to his game. He was actually going down once he got traded to the Spurs. Now he's like their main part on that team. And he was having a little mental health issues when it came to him getting traded from the Raptors as well. Uh, you also, uh, had Markel Fultz that you mentioned get in, like he was dealing with some stuff. Yeah, Markel, Markel was going through it. Only and even the free like, throws, yeah, right? The free throws. He just didn't feel like he was wanted there. Uh, and it, and it was good. It, it sucked that, like, he went to Orlando. It's cool because he found a home in Orlando. Yeah. It just sucked that he tore his ACL. But he yeah. found a home, and he found the camaraderie, and he found the system that finally fits him. I'm happy to see that. And then even with Dame, like, Dame is just – Dame is such a class act, bro. Like, I have nothing for – Now, if I – I would be so wrong to pay $1,200 to go to a Portland game and scream fuck you to that guy's <laughs> face because he's done nothing. But he's He's quiet. He don't fuck with nobody. He stays between him. He stays between. He minds his own business. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. comes in, gets the job done, and goes home and play with the kids. Well, okay, so let, let's speak a little bit. Like, I, I agree with that part, too, and kudos to Dame as well. I, I just want to speak a little bit more about the mental health part <clears throat> is that this man played three years in pro basketball, doing what everybody dreams of doing. Right. Right. And then he also, during those three years, made over $5.2 million. Right. And he's still having, assuming, I guess, let's just, let's not assume, I guess you could say, but let's, let's just say worst come to worst. Okay. Okay. He has some issues going on right now in his life. Right. That's just to show you that like, these are deep issues. These are things that people have to endure and overcome every single day of their life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to Caleb Swinnigan, it's just another fact that like, or just another, uh, uh, example of basically saying that like money doesn't solve, doesn't give you happiness. And then, uh, even having like living out your dreams, sometimes like you have other things that gives you no fulfillment. Yeah. Like, like you have to fill some type of void or other things may be hitting you really wrong. And the thing is, I just want to raise awareness as to just mental health and th- the ways that you want to uh, take care of it. Like, definitely just reach out. Yeah, definitely. And also, you know, like, don't be scared to do therapy. I- I'll speak out myself. Like, I've done, like, a couple sessions of therapy. Hey, honestly, man, I, I went to about, like, three, four therapy sessions this year. That was the greatest thing it's, I could have ever done for myself this year. I'm just going to say one thing. I just want to raise awareness because I've d- endured it and I've always Same. looked down on it. Same. So, overall, I just want to share that to hopefully empower other people and also just spread just warm awareness and create people to just be like, go find some help. Go get something uh, that's just going to open your eyes to something new because, I like, you know, I had the opportunity to, like, move out to, like, a different state and then come back to California and California is great for so many reasons. Right. And uh, they just kind of, like, emphasize once I went to a different spot and, like, it's just a little bit different in some other ways. And you also just learn a lot of di- different things. So uh, some people don't have those opportunities to really grow as a person. And uh, 
learning different cultures, learning different ways that people move around and, and how they think and stuff. One of the greatest inventions that are the greatest invention ever made by a person is language, communication. That's all mm. I have to say. That's why this podcast Bars. is fucking great. Bars. But uh, no, definitely want to raise some awareness on that. And kudos to Dame for shutting down a lot of Yeah, them. bro. Definitely take care of y'all mentors. Take care of y'all A chicken. lot of this Go social see somebody, being man. first and shit. People just talking shit on people. Like, don't be so quick to it, do it. It's no point, man. Like, I don't know why we're... It just, it's pathetic to see, like, the day and age that we're in. Like, we rather shit on somebody than help somebody. Like, it's just... Well, it's pathetic. Well, it sucks when you use tools that could be used for great for, right. for worse. So right. so let's let's get on back on track with the positivity there. But let's get on to, like us, let's get on to some more positive information. Definitely yeah. want to bring that up, though. Fancundo. I hope I said that. Is Fancundo. that how you say it, name? Fancundo. Fancundo. Said Composo. Wait, wait, wait. Composo. I just want to introduce Campuzo. this man. Campuzo. He's a guard. Came from Europe. Very, very uh, fundamentally sound when it comes to basketball. This man yep. came over. Composo. Doing well for the Nuggets on a squad that already has a ton of pieces. Uh, Jokic is a guy that puts, is a glue that puts them all together. Yeah, do- Composo. 100%. Composo is just another little Weapon. garnish. Yeah. Uh, he just, he just, Puts a little spice on, but he's salt, babe. The salt that, bang, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he just he just adds so much. Get then go ahead and say the quote. Uh, do you have any other things to say about him? Actually, uh, I'm Wrap not surprised that. Uh, oh wait, about Dame or Caleb? No, no, no. Uh, on Composo. Oh, Composo. Um, let's. I'm not surprised, but all European guards are all fundamentally sound. It's it's European he has a ball. Lot of experience. European ball is totally different from American ball. You're yeah. way more fundamentally sound than you have more athleticism in American. When ball. he when he's surrounded by all this talent and then he's just distributing it everywhere. Right. Just, he, he's putting a little garnish on all these little passes that he's doing. Mm-hmm. All right, now uh, let's get into the quote. Right. So he had said, "I like to talk to the players I guard before the game. I tell them I'm a big fan, and it's an honor to play against them." Yep. Shout out to him because. Uh, just keep it. Just stay a class act, bro. He's a just very, stay a class act. He's a very humble person. He's taken advantage of uh, all the experience that he's had over there. He said that he's before his career ended over there. He wanted to try out his skills against the best of the best over here. He's making the best out of it. I think it's just another guy that has a little bit more opportunity, especially as a guard. Right. Now that Jamal Murray's down to really uh, get some exposure or have a bigger role when it comes to again gelling all these guys and putting all the pieces in the in the right places for the puzzle there. Right. But uh, yeah, well, like, do you have anything else to say about him? I know that uh, he he said that like he would talk some smoke and get some like uh, help like in the beginning, and, and like and like give him like props in the beginning and be like humbling throughout the whole thing. But then like. During the game, like he's so nice, especially with the way he plays and how hard he plays. He's kind of like uh, Patrick Beverly, Alice Caruso type guy, where he's really getting into people. And uh, but he's so respectful at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like it's really frustrating for players, right? You can't yeah. even be mad at him. No, I mean, I would rather have a dude like that than a dude like. You know what? I'm not going to say his name right now because I'm not going to feed in that story. You know uh, what I'm talking about. We've yeah. been t- sending it all through Twitter for like the last three, four days. No worries. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm glad we have, you know, professionalism like that instead of that professionalism that we were talking about on Twitter. I'm really happy that this guy uh, will have a chance to really show out what he could do in the yeah. playoffs. Yeah. Uh, he's going to have a really nice role for the Nuggets. A bigger role, again, now that, uh, you know, Jamal Murray is out. Right. Uh, so, Composo, keep an eye on him, especially in the playoffs here. Uh, really uh, light star. Like, he can, like, blink, you know. Bl- he's like a blinking, shining star for the Nuggets. He's going to show up every once in a while and really make a mark. Yeah. On the next one, though, I just mentioned Alex Caruso and how this uh, Composo kind of plays a similar role where he's really getting up in people, trying to make a, a difference, a little bit of, of an IQ when it comes to isolation type of defense when it comes to Alex Caruso. LeBron James has to say his attention to detail. He's just smart. Knows what he uh, knows what we want from him to do on a nightly basis. He's always in the right place at the right time. He just makes some plays. Uh, it, some show in the box score and some do not. Gitten, you seen the game of the other day with the Lakers. What do you have to say about Alex Caruso's performance and what he means to the team going forward? Jeannie Bus is going to have to come out of her pockets. I, keep I hate you. Genie Go, Bus on. is gonna have to come out of her pockets to keep this dude. Why am I dumb, bro? Bro, the, you, you said it. Just you just said it. What he does does not appear 
on the stat board. I didn't say it. LeBron James said it. Okay, well, you read what LeBron says. Same, not the same thing. But anyway, no, like, I'm just saying because I don't like Kuzo. <laughs> oh yeah, you you don't fuck. This he guy, got low. This guy, man. This, he got low, you and just, he you just, you just have something against ball people. And is he that luckily what it is? got there. You just but have something against ball people. Curry made him fall. Anthony Davis luckily stuck in front of Steph Curry. Uh, oh shit! Oh, his mic. Uh, my mic. At least once a fucking episode. <laughs> no. Uh. So then, he so he dropped Alex Caruso. Okay. Anthony Davis stayed in front of Steph Curry. Steph Curry then got uh, was trying to draft to was trying to give it up to uh, Draymond Green after he got double teamed by Alex Caruso, but Draymond can't fucking shoot, so he passed it to the other side, and it didn't really work out for the Warriors in the end. Right. But I'm just saying, like, he had some health defense on that. He, he was good. Have, he, defense. he did have my defensive help. player of the year candidate. <laughs> so that was Alex Caruso. That's all I gotta say. That's Alex Caruso's fault. You can blame it on him. I just think he has effort that nobody else will show, and he has a smaller size. Do you not need effort though? Do you yeah, not you need, need you, Do you not need that one guy who's just gonna like fuck it? He cannot yeah, score no points, but if he goes out there and tips every steal, Bro, the, yeah, it, tips every rebound, what'd you say? Tips every steal. Score no every, points. Score no. Score but no it points. doesn't matter. That's why PJ Tucker was. That's why guys like PJ Tucker, Tony first, Allen, uh, uh, Royce O'Neal, the guys half. like them, like they were so great. Okay, bro, they are so much My, better. They're so much better <laughs> offensively than this man. All right, Alex Caruso is not good offensively. I get no. it on the defensive side. Great, cool, but don't give nobody that much praise. Then we would give a, a Patrick Beverly, please. I just said he deserves his money. That's it. What the Patrick fuck Beverly is wrong has a different has a different type has a different type of story. But no, I don't think he's gonna get. Bro, why you're paying everybody else, bro? You still got Dennis Schroeder to pay for so that you don't lose shit. I'm not gonna give Alex Caruso that money. You don't have to give him a, a big ass bag. You, you just said, I, he, yeah, Jeannie's yeah, gonna have yeah, big Jeannie, damn bag. Yeah, Jeannie, you gonna have to pay him oh, about like Lord. thirty mil. The same thing you gave Kyle Kuzma, the same thing you gonna have to give J- to Alex Caruso. I just want to shout Alex Caruso out though. This is nah, whoa, 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 You just said, I don't well, you like fucking Alex bring Caruso. You fucking I don't bring like it ball people. Read it. No, you go ahead. This, no, read this it. This is your story. Go ahead. It's not my story. Wow. I made the script. <laughs> Uh, what's big that Vogel didn't Yeah, play? he don't know shit. All right. What the fuck? Never what? forget. <laughs> you don't care. Never forget, this dude skipped his own sister's wedding to focus on competing for a championship. So he's a bad person for no. that? No, I'm not. I never said he's bad. I said, what I say? I said, shout out. And then you started saying all your bullshit. Yeah. Good. Positive, dog. Fuck you, Robbie. I'm just saying nice <laughs> things about him. I just say, you just... don't, don't, don't give me the Karu. Why does he got a nickname? The Caruso? You every, telling me every, he's a show? Every Laker gets a nickname, bro. Caruso? Yeah. Oh that's my! His nickname. Why does he have? Why does he have a nickname? Stop. What the fuck? Stop. Why? Why is your nickname Bob? No, but that, bro, that's different. That, that's a different type of thing in in our own little group. Like, bro, like, like I'm the. So that's his own group. I get, I get it. Yeah, with the Lakers fan, all that stuff, and their love for this man, I'm, I, I don't see it. I'm not a big love for this man, even though like he, he did show it last, last game. I get it. I'm just saying, he doesn't deserve fucking like. I don't even want to talk about it. Everybody already knows I don't really like Alex Caruso. We'll see it. Boy, if if they didn't win that game, right? If they didn't win that game, Alex Caruso's name is not fucking being mentioned one damn bit. Like. Ah, oh my goodness. I'm, he he didn't do well in the second half until like the last two minutes where he said, oh, I won't When it counts, right? I get it. So It works. Right, it worked. Great. And the way that he got dropped. But you got <laughs> And Anthony Davis was there. Okay. I, 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 we'll just get off And? Here. I'm done talking about Alex Caruso. That's a Caruso, dog. I, every, hey, bro. I, every single like blooper that he has, I'm like, that's Caruso. Right there. That's the show that you watch. Trash. Mark Cuban out here trying to get in Rajon Rondo's head. What did he say? He said, uh, Q, what did he say? I hope he shoots a lot because the Clippers are going to face the Mavericks in the first round of the playoffs, just like last year in the bubble. And honestly, you can't troll Rondo. You can't did, troll him. Did Mark Cuban not see the last, the last postseason? Right. And everybody had doubts about Rondo. I had doubts about Rondo because I watched him in the regular season. And he wasn't doing shit. But then he sees postseason. He's like, ah, ah, 
ah. He's like, all right, let me put my shoes on this now. Is the <laughs> next level of Rondo. <laughs> and like every round you go deeper into the playoffs, Rondo gets better. Mm-hmm. So you're waking up the dragon before exactly. he's he's even trying to wake up. That's what I'm saying. Like Mark Mark. Out of why Rondo? Mark, Mark you going in the murky's water. Stop. You going in the murky waters, boy. Why Rondo? Boy, you going in the murky water. Luca ain't Bro, enough, man. Pick, pick on pick on Paul George. K- Everybody's picking on Paul George. KP ain't enough, man. Pick on Kawhi Leonard. Dorian Finney Smith ain't enough. No, uh, Kawhi Leonard don't give a shit about nobody talking about. It. He don't even go, go on a phone. Trey like, Burke is cool and all, but he still ain't enough. Mark Cuban actually tried to do this beforehand when he said that Russell Westbrook, before the playoff series started against the OKC Thunder a couple of years, oh, a long time ago now, it seems yeah, like. It was like 2015, 2015. Mark Cuban has said, oh, uh, he's not a superstar. Kevin Durant's a superstar. Blah, 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 blah. And then they lost the season, or they lost the series. They lost in five. Five and Rush dropped 36, 12, and nine. Almost a triple double. Almost. And then guess who called him an idiot? Well, called uh, Mark Cuban an idiot. KD. Kevin Durant. Coming to coming to the uh, get uh, Russell Wilson. Uh, Russell Wilson. Russell Westbrook's back. <laughs> so, uh, Gifton, do you think this is wise? I I, I think you already kind of said it, but uh, what do you expect from Rondo in this coming season? In this coming series, I'm expecting, honestly, for like averages. Like a 10, 8, uh, excuse me, if it's, let's say rebounds are the second one, 10, 8, and 11. That's what I think his, his next series averages will be. Almost a triple-double, but get the rebounds. Yeah, agreed. 10, 8, 11, 10, 7, 11, because I mean, 7, 11. Uh, that is a leader defensively and offensively on the court. Right. Why would you give him material? Why would you poke the a owner. stick at the beer? And then, too, it's like, damn, Mark, like, you you that petty, bro. Out you that people. petty? You gotta hop in like the Twitter world and start. You gotta just start playing the media games and shit like that. Mm. Like, bro, fuck the Mavericks. You you don't need. He don't need the Mavericks at the end of the day. Yeah, you don't need them. Like you're doing this shit for fun, really, at this point. But it's just like, bro, what? I, well, the the NBA is getting better and better and better. So his investment's just going up. Well, what what I what I, so. what I mean is that like he's doing the media shit for fun. Like, uh, bro, you know that's not your lane. Yeah, that's not your just, lane. No, that's no, not no. Your role. First of all, it, it is because he's an entrepreneur. I'm saying don't talk about basketball. Like, talk about basketball, but don't call out the other player and give him material. Right, Say right. what you're gonna do as a right. team. All this other stuff that you're talking about. That's smart. He's already a name. He's a brand in himself. Mark Cuban. He's a fucking entrepreneur. He's on Shark Tank and shit. Of course, he can do whatever he wants. Shark Just tank. don't fucking talk about Rajon Rondo, who's literally going to play your team and, and could do shit to you <laughs> defensively, <laughs> offensively. Ass. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, on to the next one here. Another receiver, Julio. Julio! Number 11. Um, they The Falcons, apparently, and it's a rumor, just a rumor, about him possibly being traded. Uh, the Falcons with this contract of Julio Jones, See, it's very I, very expensive. But oh, is that why? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. That's all I was gonna ask. Like, why would they want to trade Julio? Because of the contract? Because they suck. They, they suck. suck. I do not. Uh, if they're if they're restarting, and this is stupid. Like, I don't really believe in these rumors, and this is the reason why is because they they didn't draft a wide receiver. I mean, excuse me, a quarterback. They they drafted a tight end. Right. And I feel like they would. Like, you drop the tight end to open it up for everybody else or, you know, give somebody else some help, uh, give your quarterback help. Now, if they were starting over, they they had an opportunity to drop the quarterback, but they didn't. And then at the same time, like, I don't understand where, like, you do go, you do get a tight end when you're trying to restart everything. So, like, what, what are you doing overall? And, ult- and ultimately, like, I just don't get why you're trying to get away from a Julio Jones. I get it if, if it's your contract, but, like, that's what you, like, submitted to. So, overall, it's either you're going to trade him for something really, really low. Right, like, that's, that's exactly what I don't even think it's going to be. Say, like, if, you don't, if you don't get the fucking heaven and earth for Julio, then you just you just wasted all. They're not going to get. You just wasted all of Julio's time and all of the organization's you can't time. Get, you can't get heaven and earth for Julio because well, he's I mean, on you a crazy contract. Well, no, but I'm just saying, like, after I seen, like, the uh, like the potential trade packages and, like, how and Kansas City see? had, like, all those picks or something like what, that. What picks? That It was, like, a couple of second round picks for 2022. Yeah, so some for, like, you think second round picks are the world? Like, like literally for, for Matthew Stafford, we traded uh, three, like, two first rounders and a third. That's that's the world. Well, two two first rounders is gold. So for Julio, not a quarterback who's like a main part of the position. 
may, like I, I if he if they get a first rounder for him, that's crazy. That's crazy to me because who who just got traded just recently uh four wide receivers and they didn't get that much like at all. Um, Cuz I remember Mari Cooper got a lot. Mari Cooper. Did. And then oh, Mari Cooper, Mari Cooper got day. I think just I think just a uh a first round pick for him. But who who just fucking got traded? Oh, it was DeAndre Hopkins and I think it was like for a fucking second round and uh David Johnson. Oh uh, yeah. So But that's different though. That was no, I that was that's different stupid. because yeah, the team was in the team was in turmoil, the relationship with the coaches was in turmoil. So that's totally different. They had to take whatever they could for D-Hop. Yeah. For Julio, though, I mean, you said you can't, but, I mean, realistically... I, if I'm the Falcons, then I'm starting getting him the fuck out of here. Yeah. Because his contract's insane. Yeah. Yeah. And he, like, is never on the field. I'm cool. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. But, 